Hello, everyone, and welcome to uh, Balanced Chat, I guess, is the title of this. A balanced discussion with the Balanced team uh, for our Steel Shepherd update, update 1.4.0, which is releasing today, December 5th. Uh, I'm joined uh, by some fantastic gameplay designers from the Balanced team once again to chat about all the changes that are coming in uh, Steel Shepherd. Uh, first up, Jason, can you introduce yourself? Hey, I'm Jason. Uh, some of you know my as Tarnations. Uh, excuse the voice a little. Um, but yeah, I'm the lead balance designer on uh, Company of Heroes 3. Amazing. And uh, Darren. Hey, I'm Darren. You might have also known me as Mirage Fla back in the day. I am one of the gameplay designers and the balance designer. You might also know me as the guy who has worked on the Coastal Battle Group. Awesome. So folks, if you want to stay up to date on everything Company of Heroes and you want to find out more about the Steel Shepherd update, we have so much news and information out there right now. And the best place to find it is, of course, uh, our social channels, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. You can find us at Company of Heroes or head to the forums where you can find the patch notes uh, and you can follow along there as we go through this discussion. So com uh, community.companyofheroes.com for the patch notes uh, and everything else. You can head to companyofheroes.com. Uh, Discord server is at discord.gg slash company of heroes, where you can chat with the team and some other players, uh, a lot of other players, not just some. And uh, of course, you can follow our new Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash company of heroes. So today we're going to be talking about all things balance uh, to learn about all the changes that uh, you folks have worked on for our Steel Shepherd update, which is releasing today. And we're going to be talking about things uh, in like uh, high level goals and eventually we'll get into some specific changes and patch notes that you want to cover um, and again don't forget you can find those notes at community.companyofheroes.com so you can follow along um, okay so uh, Jason let's let's maybe start with with high level what what are we trying to do in uh, Steel Shepherd in terms of, of you know a balance approach uh, to the game here yeah so for uh, one four we had some high level goals um, the biggest one was there were some unit classes, again, that weren't really being used. And at the same time, uh, the, the unit, they were supposed to counter. So light mortars versus machine guns, that balance wasn't there. So machine guns were a big topic and they were a big problem. Um, and this is kind of like to wrap up the saga to hopefully address most of the issues with that unit class. While at the same time pushing forwards two unit classes that ha haven't really seen much use. So this is the light mortar. Um, and these are the uh, specialist anti-tank or anti-infantry vehicles as well. So both of these, all three of these unit classes are going to see quite a lot of changes in this patch. Awesome. And I think you had a couple of other high-level uh, topics that you mm -hmm. wanted to hit on here. So so what's happening with field defenses? Yeah, so uh, coinciding um, with the other content we're doing, we're doing quite a few changes to field defenses. So these are like everything from field defense, uh, from fighting positions to bunkers um, to pretty much, yeah, pretty much everything because we've also changed how off maps and other things interact with these things as well. Mm -hmm. um, so what about uh, battle groups? I know, Darren, last week we talked uh, to you and Miguel about the new battle groups that are coming mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Hammer and Shield along with the Steel Shepherd update. Uh, so what are, you, are we trying to do from a balanced perspective for, for all of our battle groups? Or, so, or Jason, do you want to speak to that? No, speak on this no go ahead. Those? He's so, the one working on it. <laughs> So for our battle groups, uh, particularly for our old ones, we're trying to push a few more of the units that are like like key units of the battle group a little bit more forward and further defined their roles. So this is like going to be units like the commandos that you're going to see later down in the patch notes. But we've also done some further adjustments to like like SSF F to give like the US a little bit more artillery into the late game and just further adjustments on certain battle group picks just to push them even more forward in terms of their strength. Okay, so it sounds like uh, we're making some 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 pretty, uh, I don't want to say substantial changes, but important changes uh, to ensure that, you know, battle groups are where we want them to be. Um, okay, so should we just get into some of the specifics then? Yeah, let's, let's roll. Okay, cool. Um, so uh, first up, uh, Jason, I think you want to talk about grenades. So what is happening to grenades? Yeah, so at the highest level, um, the game has changed quite a lot since launch. Um, for hopefully in good ways, infantry are a lot more responsive. We have a lot less issues with infantry getting caught in ground cover and whatnot. 
Um, and we've noticed that over time, grenades have kind of fallen out of favor. They're, they're just too hard to use. Their return isn't that high. So Darren here has done quite a lot of specific changes to spice them up. Uh, talk about them. Yeah. So the main thing of our grenades was, to, in general, it's a lethality <laughs> change across the board because our game's not the exact same as Company of Heroes 1 or 2. Who in our health pools tend to be a lot higher than prior games. Our mm. grenades couldn't one-shot certain models. We wanted to bring back that that power that you felt when you threw a grenade onto a squad. So if somebody did su sit on top of a grenade, you would get the expected result that someone in that squad was going to die, even if it was from the one of the less powerful grenades in the game. Okay. Uh, are, are there any sort of specific grenade changes that you wanted to call out to, to players? Again, the patch notes are out so they can dive into them, but are there any specific ones that, that you wanted to highlight? For the most part, for our grenades, that you, you'll notice a difference between the allied and axis grenades, and that's intentional. The allied grenades are generally more damaging their, than their axis counterparts, mainly due to the fact the allies generally have to pay into their grenades to get access to them, whereas the axis will have slightly weaker grenades because of their more ease of access to them, mm -hmm. but they'll also get slightly more range compared to the other you units just because that is more inherent to well the stick grenades they generally carry okay so we do have a bit of that historical authenticity mm -hmm. <laughs> getting thrown in there um jason any any sort of final thoughts on on grenade changes yeah um so this is going to be a pretty big shift so we're going to keep an eye on it um hopefully these go well uh no more you throw a stick grenade under a rifleman squad and they just and they, they just shrug it off they just walk it off right uh so a lot of that's been addressed Hopefully, uh, players enjoy it. Okay, uh, so let's maybe move on to field defenses. What uh, what kind of work has, has gone in here? So quite a lot of things have changed here, um, but the, 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 the ba basically the initial problem was we were noticing that um, people weren't really building defenses. Now near launch, that was a thing, but it was not balanced in a very good way. So we had to we have to tone it back. But now we're bringing it back now that a lot of other things have online properly uh, and we have proper counters and we have proper uh, counterplay. So mm -hmm. across the board, uh, we've done quite a lot of changes. Uh, uh, so, so, so Darren, yeah, what, what's, what are some of those specific things that we've done uh, to make field defense? So this is probably about? targeted at our like garrisonable emplacement. So this is like the Wehrmacht bunkers, the fighting nest, and the fighting position. The big one that you'll notice on all three of them it, well, two things you'll notice is all of them have gotten cost reductions to better reflect like that these emplacements by themselves don't really do anything on their own. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to make them more accessible to the player. Okay. Or so you can use them as like garrisonable strong points. And the second big thing is now that units, when units garrison these fighting positions, they'll be much stronger than units in regular garrisons or heavy cover. Because in all our co in all the prior co games, there's never been really an incentive to take positions in these these like more powerful fighting positions just just because as they only offer the same aim power as a regular garrison, but mm -hmm. you, you essentially put yourself into one place. Mm -hmm. On top of that, we no I believe as my brain is fizzling out. Oh no. <laughs> it's, yeah. Jason. So yeah, so like we. we, we oh wait, now now everyone, hold on. Okay, yeah. Oh yeah, and the help with the Wehrmacht bunkers and the fighting nest, we've also added a few more firing slots from them. So your squad, you have more people able to shoot out in all directions. Yeah. Okay, so so cost reductions, they're a little bit more efficient. Um, Jason, what what else do you want to add to? Yeah, to this? I, I wanted to highlight the thing about garrisoned units in these defenses. Um, those who have come from Co2 in particular probably know you didn't ever really want to do that with very few exceptions. Uh, no, so we're trying to address that by giving them an inherent buff when you're in these built defenses. Uh, so if you're in a bunker in a fighting nest, you actually get an accuracy and rate of fire bonus. Okay. Um, that's also to help because our damage is relatively low at range as well. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty big change. We've also changed how many slots you have. So even the biggest squads will be able to properly put all of their firepower in the direction you expect them to. So that's another major change. Okay, cool. Any other thoughts on field defenses before we move on? Um, one other thing is that we have retuned quite a lot of the off maps as well. 
to, to see how their relationship with these things are. So some things will remove them not quite as well as they were before. Before, like certain abilities could just clear an entire area of any defenses, which is still the case of like the biggest ones. But we've balanced it so that there are some ways for more defensive players that really invested in their defenses mm -hmm. to keep those defenses alive, even against some of the more strong removal options. Okay. I feel like that's a really good segue into our next point, mm -hmm. uh, which is off-map artillery. Right. So, yep. Do you want to go? Or yeah, you said go ahead. So, this is particularly so, oh, like one of the big things we had to do since we are rolling out the coastal battle group, which is going to be more reliant on those bunkers, is we didn't want, like, all right, let's say you have fully upgraded coastal bunkers. We don't want you to be able to just w click on the map and remove the entire coastal player's bunker line. Right. You need some sort of follow up of you need to either send your units in after to clean up the. Uh, heavily damaged bunkers. So a lot of these off-map changes is they still will be able to, like, if it's not, like, a not non-upgrade bunker or just, like, a fighting nest, as that sort of thing, you'll still be able to clear it. But if you're fighting, like, bunkers that have upgrades to them um, from the Coastal Battle Group, you will need follow-up to finish them off. Right. So so I think one of the, one of the things that we you noted here in, in uh, the notes that I'm cheating off of is that like one P47 dive bomb isn't quite enough to remove a bunker, but you'll actually need the double sortie. Is is that kind of the direction that we're moving? Exactly. In? Yeah. Okay. Um, Jason, any any other sort of thoughts or specifics that you wanted to call out about uh, off maps? Um, again, this was a pretty large scale change as well. So same with the grenades. We're going to keep an eye on it. None of like we will follow up on these if. Uh, we see issues or if we see certain problematic trends, but yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so uh, what about indirect fire? Indirect fire, yes. So mortars. Mortars have uh, always been a difficult unit in the Co series to get right. Uh, this is another attempt from our end to kind of push them back into the limelight a little. Now, the American mortar in the past has had a little bit of time to shine, but with that sole exception away, the all the other mortars have kind of suffered and for, for a few different reasons. And also, they've been just generally difficult to use even yeah. when they were good. So we're trying to standardize and we're trying to make this a lot more streamlined. So for like some of the specific changes, Darren can go in detail. Mm -hmm. So one of the things we wanted to do with mortars is make them easier to use because one of the issues you would have prior is you would launch a barrage with your mortar, then your mortar would have 20 to 30 seconds where it couldn't attack at its maximum range because your barrage range was longer than your auto attack range. So we brought those in line with each other and we've brought back some of the recharge time mortars formerly had and we also made mortars fire slightly faster in terms of their auto fire. Mm -hmm. We've also done some things like increasing the turn like their damage, what they can do to a squad. So the model cap has been increased from three to four. But that, that during testing, we found that was a bit too lethal. So like the direct raw damage of a mortar on a single hit will be less, but now you'll be able to hit more squad members and deal more da damage to the entire squad. Yeah. Okay. So, so mortars are only sort of one part of indirect fire. What else are we doing there? Yeah, so we also have some adjustments to the heavier mortars or heavier indirect. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so the model caps for basically all artillery has gone up slightly um, because we've just noticed that a lot of them have been underwhelming. Uh, we've kept them fairly expensive because we don't want people to be spamming them. But at the same time, a lot of them weren't performing quite to their cost. Rocket artillery also is getting a minor uh, upgrade, the Nebel Warfare and the Stukas of Fuss are going to be much more damaging to vehicles. This isn't meant to make them counter vehicles by any means, but it's meant to be like if you drop like two or three barrages and they have three tanks sitting in it, they will actually receive damage um, rather than completely ignore it, which was inappropriate. Right. Um, and a quick, quick circle back on the light mortars as well. While we've made the... Uh, Auto fire slightly better. The majority of the power is still in the barrage. The reason why we standardized the ranges, one thing was we've noticed that people trying to like destroy a defensive position, like a bunker or HMG, would barrage. Um, and then because it would move or the barrage wouldn't kill the target, they would then suddenly the unit would just stop doing things. Mm -hmm. And it was not intuitive to most players and even to the players who knew it. It was really clunky because then after the barrage, you would have to then pick up and then move 
which would really cut into how well you could rely on a mortar to do its job. Um, so that that's the other rationale why we've cut, standardized the ranges. I know those from com coming from Co2 might have some reservations, but uh, the goal isn't to bring back laser guided mortars. The, <laughs> the point is to make mortars more reliable against the, the things they're supposed to counter, like machine guns and bunkers. Okay. Uh, any final thoughts before, uh, or, or on indirect before we move on? I think we're good. No, we're good. Okay. Uh, so, so that kind of covers all the general changes. Was there anything else that we wanted to add there before we get into the factions? Uh, no, I think that uh, I think we can move on to the factions. Okay. Cool. So, uh, first up, let's talk about uh, the U.S. forces. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe maybe let's talk about them in general first, and then we can talk about the battle mm -hmm. groups. So, um, Darren, what, what are some of the the general big picture changes that are, that are coming to the U.S. forces here? So most of our changes to USF are to either some of the units that are a little bit underused or or some of the units that are somewhat core to the faction, but that could still use improvement. And you'll find that there are a large number of changes is throughout out the various units, like for the M375 millimeter gun carriage, which we finally he made a change that should make U.S. players happy. It's not going to be a full indirect fire unit, but now the U.S. player, from the moment they go weapon support center and get their gun carriages from from that building, they'll have some sort of weapon that's able to at least pressure anti-tank guns without receiving return fire. Mm. And and we also have things like the ability to make your Greyhound tougher or in the mid-game if you really want to invest all your munitions into those light vehicles. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I think the the one that I'm really excited about is the Jeep Commander. The Jeep Commander is back. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's finally back. Many have been asking for it. He's he's coming back in a slightly different form, though. Right. Um. Not, uh, so he still brings back the radio recon, but he, the the main thing is to transition the Jeep into a little bit more of a recon unit. Uh, the Americans have the Scout, but they've they've needed another option that they can opt into. Um, and also the to allow the Jeep to um, sunset a little bit more uh, gracefully. Okay. The other big change is to the Bazooka team. Um, the Bazooka team has been on our radar for a while now. It's been difficult to try and get it to a, the right place because if it's too strong, then uh, you know one of the main weaknesses that axes can attack are gone, right? So, but this time around, we've kind of buffed up them where they are a little bit more responsive, so they'll aim faster, and their overall DPS is ever so slightly higher. Okay. Um, were there any other sort of general changes coming to the core roster that we want to call out here? Um, to, so one, one, one more is the 57 mil gun carriage, as Darren mentioned before. Um, so this unit has been a really difficult to use. Uh, on paper, it has quite a lot of different powers because it's an AT uh, light vehicle that is very cheap and early or relatively cheap and early to get. So on paper, it can be really strong. But in practice, it's it's a fixed arc, very squishy unit. So it's been very difficult to use. We've given it quite a lot of uh, buffs to see if we can get this unit into the right place. We'll be tracking it as it goes. But yeah, we buffed its uh, long range uh, indirect fire. So when it's not firing... Uh, directly as an AT weapon, where it's kind of in its most vulnerable state, it's a little bit more valuable. And uh, yeah, we'll okay. see how that goes. Okay. Um, anything about uh, our heavy armor for the U.S. forces? Want to talk about the bulldozer? Uh, bulldozer is part of a larger change that you're going to be seeing for both for like these heavy anti-infantry vehicles like the Centaur and the Brumbar. Okay. So we did some changes mainly to slightly lower their cost to bring them more in line with what they are because as most play most players generally prefer to generalists that can are able to tackle both armored vehicles and infantry. Mm. He said there wasn't really reason for the anti infantry specialist vehicles to be even much more than their or generalist counterparts. But we've also done some further changes of just making these vehicles more lethal against infantry and bunkers and emplacements so they fulfill a second role. Yeah. Okay, so that, that definitely incentivizes uh, a tougher choice when, when yeah. you're looking at And these own. units will also be a bit more reliable against vehicles. Yes. We did some changes where now they will, rather than under preferring to undershoot, they'll always prefer to overshoot on scatter. Okay. So that means if you're standing a tank right in front of a Brumbar, Dozer, or Centaur, you can expect to take reliable damage from those HE units if you're not backing up. Yeah. 
Okay. In, in other words, they'll stop missing literally a, like an entire building in front of them. Okay. Like if you park a 221 in front of a bulldozer, the bulldozer will actually hit it now. Okay. Uh, so be, be aware. Okay. That's good to know. Um, any other sort of general changes with the U.S. forces before we get into battle groups? Uh, we know they got some slight anti-tank buffs in the form of the 57 millimeter gun. And, and I'm not sure if we'll get flack on this, but we also slightly nerfed the Hellcat just a little bit. <laughs> because while, while it is very, it's a very strong unit, but the problem is due to its cost and effective, it, effectiveness, it was a little too efficient against Axis armor head-on. Okay. And this is on a unit that is able to choose how, where and when it fights just because of its high speed yeah. and slightly okay. more range than the Axis tank counterparts. The funny thing is the Hellcat has actually secretly gotten better over time mm -hmm. um, because a lot of the, what really held it back was that a lot of the times the gun would miss at long range. Uh, and this was not something statistical in the, or this was not driven by the stats on the weapon mm -hmm. had to do with how our projectiles worked. Right. Now, these ha this has been changed and bug fixed over time. And the Hellcat now is... The super fast but super accurate and super lethal <laughs> tank destroyer that can also run away from you. Right. Uh, so we, we're, yeah, we're, we're bringing it back in line. Okay. Good to know. Uh, maybe we should talk about battle groups now. Mm -hmm. um, yep. Uh, Darren, what, what, what's, uh, what are some of the changes coming to the battle groups that you specifically want to call out? Did you want to go through each of them or are there certain uh, ones that so you So the big hit? one that we probably want to call out, out, out of all of them is the big replacement for our. Uh, Flame Engineer team on the Weasel, mm -hmm. you will be well remembered. But uh, the Americans are now getting the pack outs, are now towed in by the Weasel, which will offer quite a bit of choice. You could either go, like, do I want to get the Weasel now, get that uh, opportunity, <laughs> use it on the field, get that veterancy, get early healing and all that, or do I want to wait one CP and not be able to use my battle group during this time and wait on getting that, that indirect fire piece towed in by the Weasel? Right. Um, I, I think that that's a, a change that, that we kind of teased in one of our earlier videos. So I think, I think players are pretty excited about that. Um, are, are there any other sort of changes coming to special operations that you want to call out? Uh, for the most part, we're only doing some slight munition costs to make its abilities more accessible, similar to what we're also doing with Airborne. Okay. Yeah. Um, any, any other, anything coming to Airborne or Armored that uh, is of note? Um, so Armored's uh, War Machine is going from four to three. That might raise some eyebrows for some, but we've noticed that Armored has not been delivering on exactly what it, uh, one of the intent was to allow um, light vehicle play to be more prevalent for them. Okay. Um, we're going to keep an eye on this because this, this was meant to be bundled with a few other changes that didn't quite come through. So we'll see how this goes. Um, but yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, should we move on to uh, the British? All right. All right, let's get to it. So uh, general changes that, that are coming to the uh, the British forces. Um, Darren, is there any, or, or who wants to start first? And what do we want I, to call I it? I can quickly start. Um, not too many changes for the Brits here. Um, we've mostly been moving the other factions around. So we've been careful not to move everything everywhere all at once. Mm -hmm. Um, but some, we, we've basically we've been monitoring the, uh, basically the performance of British armor for since launch and like, they've been doing really well. And we finally think that they're finally doing a little bit too well, Spe <laughs> specifically the Matilda and the Crusaders upgraded version. Mm -hmm. So we're toning both of those back, um, ever so slightly. The, the grant we also think is really good is a little being slept on a little, um, so we're giving it just a minor tone up to see uh, if we can get players to use it a little bit more because it's a very good vehicle. Okay. Uh, Darren, are there any sort of general changes for the British that you want to talk about or did you just want to get right into battle groups? Uh, I think we can go right to battle groups. I think Jason already he mentioned what, why we're slightly adjusting the British tanks. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so what's up first? So the big thing uh, that we wanted to do for Aaron C., You'll notice that there's a lot been more changes for Aaron C than the other battle groups. Is in particular that we want to incentivize the use of the commando squad, particularly as the role as a behind the lines unit with their camouflage and infiltration. One of the issues that commandos had is that after they would take a fight, you would have this commando squad that was at three fourths health or like half their health with like five to six models, but mm -hmm. you weren't able to like recover that health until you ran back to base right. but that, that didn't really fit the fantasy of a unit 
of the commando squad who wants to be behind enemy lines and always able to operate it there. And on top, top of that, we did some more minor changes. So, like, the Ford Medical Station, now British will have a retreat point, which should help them in, like, either smaller games that they go for early or the larger team games that they need to fall back mm -hmm. back to those points. And the Centaur also follows the same rule <laughs> as all our uh, heavy, heavy anti-infantry vehicles. While the Centaur is not, like, doesn't have the raw power of the Dozer and Brumbar, we still gave an improvement against infantry, and it... And because it doesn't have, like, the high damage input of those two units, it still has the advantages of both speed and rate of fire over its other counterparts. Okay. Mm -hmm. So some big changes coming to, to air and sea. Jason, were you going to say something? Nope. Okay. Uh, Indian artillery, any, anything of note there? Uh, the, r real quick, we've uh, brought back, or we, we're nerfing the airburst artillery because it's a little insane uh, for its cost. So we're nerfing that by increasing its cost and reducing its performance a little bit. And then we're also delaying volunteer infantry by one more CP. Okay. Um, Darren, what about the British Armored? For the British Armored, the main change is the forward assembly will now essentially be as good as like getting one sapper squad out. But now you have that aura, and this can also be used to repair both itself and emplacements. So it can help support like defense gameplay. Hey, while the British don't have a lot of emplacements, you can use the heal those of your allies, and it'll be much more useful in healing, healing like large, large amounts of vehicles that the British armor generally will be putting out. Okay. Um, any final thoughts on the British? I know we said we weren't going to touch them too, too much, yeah. but um, do we just want to move on to the yeah. Wehrmacht? Sure. sure. Okay, cool. Uh, so what are, what are some of the uh, general changes coming here? Yeah, for Vermox, uh, a few changes here and there. So, uh, hold down, we've uh, d done another pass on them. So now it is quite a lot more powerful, but you can no longer just activate it in combat. Now, if you started it and then you enter combat, it doesn't cancel. But uh, you basically, basically, to reward players for digging in before they fight, uh, we're giving, for example, five <laughs> range, five sight, and a significant bonus to reload. So, you know... Uh, dig into that uh, Wehrmacht late game hold down style. The other thing is um, a minor change, but also very impactful. You can no longer go straight to uh, the uh, the Panzer Command without either of the tier two buildings. Okay. Um, the, the main rationale behind this, we originally left this open to keep strategic diversity around, especially with some of the battle groups, but. You know, um, over since since launch, we've seen multiple builds with iterations that do this, and they're usually pretty oppressive, or at the very least, not the most interesting or fun to play against. Right. Um, so we've just deemed that this is just not as healthy for the game. Um, so we've simply restricted it. So you must go into a tier two building before you get that final tier. Okay. Um, but in somewhat compensation, we've also made side skirts a little bit better. So between hull down and side skirts, your late game vehicles are a little bit better. Um, uh, yeah. And then I think we have a minor. Yeah. So we also have two minor changes to the early game. Uh, that you want to talk about? Them? Uh, yeah. So for Vermok, we're mainly giving them some slight early game boost for this patch. So. Like the Pioneer Squad will be able to fight slightly better now. It will. It's not something now you can just ignore if you're trying to run past them. Okay. Um, to get to like your machine gun, but in particular, speaking on machine guns, we're buffing the 42's damage back up, up to almost to where it was before, or due to some recent nerfs that happened because we want the MG42 to be like that heavy damage dealer for the Wehrmacht faction. In the compensate for the fact they do have slightly weaker infantry in terms of the, the grenadier. Yeah. J just note, we're not buffing its suppression or arc. Um, okay. It's just the damage. Okay. Good to know. Uh, I knew that was going to be the, the first So the question. buzzsaw will be back. Okay. Cool. Um, what about some other changes to the core roster? Uh, is there anything we want to touch on? Uh, do you want me to go on the major one? <laughs> sure. Go so ahead. outside some like minor changes to like some of the existing units, the two big changes are the Brumbar and the Martyr Three Tank Destroyer. So the Brumbar, like the other heavy indirect fire or heavy direct fire anti-infantry vehicles, has received a boost to its firepower in destroying troops. But we've also slightly 
lowered its fuel cost, so it now won't be that much more expensive to fuel than a Panzer IV. Or so if you, it is going to be much more accessible and it might change how your opponent plays because sure, they can have a tank deal with this, but this thing will just remove their infantry from the map. And is it in itself because of of how we've changed the scatter, or it, the Brumbar will serve as a very excellent shield against incoming anti tank fire. Okay, and sorry, what what about the martyr there? Uh, so we oh, we wanted to do this before, but we want to distinguish the martyr from the, both the DAC and the Wehrmacht faction. Mm -hmm. And given that our Wehrmacht faction is far more defensive than. In the DAC faction, we've decided to make the Wehrmacht motor slightly more expensive in terms of fuel in particular, or, but we've given it a new ability to allow the martyr to essentially act as an anti-tank gun, like a true anti-tank gun going up to range 60, and when you also sight down the vehicle, you'll also be able to fire much faster. Right, and it is, in comparison, is, so that makes the martyr, like, once you've set up a position, you can lock down that area. Okay, and yeah, set, set, sorry, setting it down, is that a new ability? Yeah, that, that's a new ability. You, some might remember it from Code 1. Mm -hmm. One, we the sight main gun ability. So this is going to increase your martyr's range from 50 to the same range as a regular anti-tank gun, so it can operate in that same role. Okay. Well, given that the Luftwaffe quarters itself does not contain an anti-tank gun. Okay. And you'll also get a DPS increase allowing the, the martyr to be more lethal to vehicle. Those particularly at distance. Okay. Um, Jason, is there anything else that we want to cover in the, the core roster before we get to battle groups? No, we can we can move. Okay. Uh, Darren, battle group changes. What's coming? So the big one that we're doing for Mechanize, and this is going to likely incentivize the Stug assault group more, is uh, you'll no longer be able to have that Panzer Grenadier squad, but you'll have another battle group that gives you quick access to Stoss Troopin. So uh -huh. that means... Means at least from the three original battle groups from the Wehrmacht, you have some form of access to elite infantry, whether it be Luftwaffe's Fallschirmjäger, breakthrough with the 251 half track and the Stoss Truppen, or you can go mechanize and still get Stoss Truppen in a bit earlier, which will also mesh better with their STG 44 upgrade. Okay, I'm looking forward to seeing that. Um, okay, is 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 that it for mechanized? Anything else that you want to touch on there, or should we should we talk about Luftwaffe? Yeah, Luftwaffe, we've touched up. Um, with mostly the emplacements for it. Um, so we've reduced the cost on the 20 mil because well, we kind of kneecapped it a little too too much uh, early on. Uh, and then we, I believe we've also buffed uh, the 88 ever so slightly. Um, right? Uh, no, well, we, we made it easier to build. Um, More accessible, and the yep. 88 will now be a very lethal threat to pretty much all all aircraft in the area. So maybe not against like the toughest loiters, but any strafing run, if the 88 manages to shoot one shell into like the P-47 strafe run, uh, no, or even the dive bomb is very likely to take them down with one shot. Okay, mm -hmm. so so it's definitely a little bit de deadlier against anti-air, um, or against air, air rather. Um, anything else to cover with, with the Wehrmacht or should we move on to the Deutsche Afrika Corps? To the deck. To the deck. Go. All right. Um, general changes coming to the to the DAC. What do we want to yeah. talk about here? We have um, a, a bit of lighter changes for the DAC as well. Um, I think we mostly moved USF in relative to them because we do know people have been uh, talking a lot about that matchup. Um, so we've changed what, the, the 250 mortar half track ever so slightly, uh, and we've buffed the Panzer III. Uh, the Panzer III was getting a little bit bullied by the Chaffee in particular. Um, so the frontal armor is going up on it, and the cost is going down ever so slightly on it. Um, we're also doing a little bit more standardization where we're making sure all of the vehicles can use smoke. So this means the Martyr can now use smoke, uh, which is pretty big. This would this will help that vehicle quite a lot against chaffy dives as well. Mm -hmm. um, and one really cool thing is we have moving flamethrowers on the Guastatori. So your flamethrower terminators are back. <laughs> Um, and you can go roast some fools with them. Okay, is is this in response to us bringing the Rangers into the game? Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, Darren, what, what about uh, battle group changes? What's what's coming for the? For uh, the Dak's not particularly getting a ton of battle group changes because we did a lot of their battle group changes in one point three. Mm -hmm. They're mainly getting some slight adjustments, like the armored support anti tank lawyers getting a bit more expensive, and that's in addition to the fact the plane will no longer track. Is just getting that cost increase because unlike the British version, 
And it's it's projectiles or hit scan, whereas the British you can actually dodge by just going forward or backing up. Mm-hmm. Up for and the big thing is mainly we're just giving some slight adjustment to the bursillary. So like we're getting making their sprint last longer to better suit, suit that as a combat sprint for the unit and reducing their population. So oh, if you go bursas, they won't be as impacting on your manpower upkeep because bursa is do we want bursa to provide more like an infantry gameplay for the deck rather than in that sort of infantry mechanized provided by the Panzer Grenadier. Okay, um, so so. That's a lot that we've just kind of gone through. I'm kind of curious what what our what our what our takeaway is. Like like what what are we trying to? I, I know we kind of covered at the top. Like what are our goals? But like let's let's summarize what these changes yeah. are, are meant to do for for uh, the Steel Shepherd update, Jason. Yeah. So so some major shifts that we're hoping to see um, is to see again the unit classes that weren't that good. So the light mortar and the anti infantry specialists. Part of this is also to kind of spice up team games quite a lot. Mm. Um, we've we've gotten a lot of feedback that it's gotten a little stale with medium tank spam kind of being the thing. Um, hopefully with some of these defensive changes, with the changes to specialist units, um, and just to change to some of the meta game across the board, that helps alleviate the problem. We're going to continue working on this, uh, but that's kind of the goal. In terms of like the smaller modes, for example, for competitive one we won. Uh, we hope that changes to like grenades, for example, um, spice up the action layer of the game, reward, um, you know, all those little tricks that you could do of like throwing grenades or timing them properly to be much more rewarding than they were before. Um, and also just to bring back the mortar class as a proper unit that uh, will help players in that mode, because we've noticed that in that mode, that, that unit has really struggled. Okay. Uh, Darren, what about you? Sort of final thoughts on, on all these balance changes that are coming. Uh, as a whole, for the balance cha- changes, they're mainly just class shuffles and improvements, like in particular, or like, as Jason said a while back, like for like the final piece regarding like team weapons and HMGs, like we wanted things like the light mortar to be these specific counters to those units. We didn't want to be these units to be like just forgotten. Mm-hmm. On, like, it's like, it shouldn't be the first response like, oh, it's an HMG. The first response is to flank it. It's, oh, it's an HMG. I can counter this with a mortar team. Right. Even to get rid of it. So, well, there's we want that sort of decision play rather than like you just stick to your core, like build for riflemen and hope for the best <laughs> sort of situation. Uh, yeah. That's that's my strategy. Why why, why you got to call me yeah. out like that? The um, <laughs> yeah, like like hopefully with a lot of these changes to some of the more underused things, mm-hmm. players can again see another shift in terms of what they're playing against or what they can potentially play. Again, one of our major goals for Company Heroes Three as a whole is to have a large collection of different strategies that are all viable. Um, we've hit this to le- greater and lesser extents depending on each patch, but we're really hoping to spice up the units that you see that you can use and. You know, when you change what you use to counter these, then all of a sudden it's a different game. Right. Uh, and that's the goal. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm excited to see how it all plays out. And, uh, you know, we're going to be watching matches very, very carefully in, in the coming weeks. Um, but I, I think we're going to kind of wrap things up there. So, again, if you want to stay up to date on everything coming in Steel Shepherd, you're going to want to follow us on your social channel of choice at Company of Heroes. Uh, you can find our Discord at discord.gg slash Company of Heroes, where you can find other players to play with uh, or to get advice from. Um and for everything uh, live stream related, find us at twitch.tv slash company of heroes, our new channel. Uh, thanks to everyone that's following us there now. And of course, if you want to find the patch notes and uh, our mission briefing and everything else for Steel Shepherd, head to community.companyofheroes.com. Uh, so thanks so much, Jason. Thanks, Darren. Uh, looking forward to seeing these changes uh, out in the wild. Uh, but that's going to be it for today. Uh, again, remember that Steel Shepherd and Hammer and Shield are out now. Uh, and we can't wait for you to jump back into the game and to check out the big changes in this update. Uh, So thanks, folks, and we will see you next time.